So hi everyone, another day of the 2021 Launch Your New Career You Love Online Summit. And I'm Andrea Tais, I'm the host of this online summit and I'm very much pleased to be speaking to my new guest for today, which is Kay Newton. Hello Kay, how are Hello. you? Hello, very well thank you, wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me Andrea. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure to be talking to you because you are someone who is um doing some really great work which i can align a lot and what you do is actually you are a midlife strategist and you are an author and speaker but kate would you like to tell us a little bit more about what do you do who do you help and with what so it's interesting isn't it i come from a non um, career background in a way um, so my story now we've got now we've got to the midlife age our stories are very long so briefly I um, had a career um, in retail to start with after I finished university and I hated it I really did and I was bullied by the manager of the the store I worked in and thanks to her what happened to me is I jumped on board a boat sailed to Mallorca and never swam back. And that also meant that I've really spent um, the rest of my career building my own companies, my own businesses, um, and not worked in, corporate, in the corporate world and lived a very simple life here in Mallorca. And that's really what I help people do, is I help them peel the layers of the onion um, and really simplify uh, their lifestyle and what they're doing, not just in their, their business career, but holistically, which I think is really important. So your background is definitely different than most of us or even most of the speakers we have on the summit. And it's so very interesting because I would be, I would really like to know how did it happen that you started doing this, what you're doing? Like, did you see the need or people were just naturally coming to you with advice, for advice uh, with that? Or like, how did it happen? Yeah, I think it's a mix, really. Um, that's why I like calling myself the midlife strategist rather than a coach, because um, we we've all got our t-shirts we've all got our experience and people when they realize that you've got that experience they come to you for that reason you know they say oh I, you know, I know Kay downsized and um, had a really exciting time midlife went off to Zanzibar and lived in a two-room tin roofed house something that I quite would like to do let me go talk to her um, and therefore you can't coach because you're doing a mix you're ba you know working on your experiences as well as working with the coaching and helping them create space for their understanding and their way forward. So it's a mix really. Awesome. And so do you, do you see um, that there is a, the need for simplicity in today's society and specifically in this current uh, environment we live in and with the pandemic going on and all those changes we're experiencing is there more need for simplicity? Yeah, I think there is that there's a huge need for simplicity. I think probably the pandemic has made us and helped us realize that we can't go on doing what we're doing to ourselves or to the planet. And we have to make changes. And some of the changes we can do is to literally simplify um, the way we live our lifestyles. Um, and that that's you know a mix there's more to it than just simplifying but yeah that's part and parcel of it yeah absolutely and if somebody is maybe still not doing it <laughs> yet they they feel the need or kind of they they know that something has to go on because otherwise this is not sustainable right would you have any tips or maybe suggestions where can we start today what can we start looking for um in order to get our, our lives easier. Definitely. Um, I think there's two parts to it. The, the first part is space. And I call space the final frontier. If you're you know, a Dr. Spock fan, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But space is something that we just have forgotten about. It's not something that we allow ourselves to have. We finish a job. And we go straight into the next one. We fit, we, you know, we decide we're going, we've come to a crossroads in our career. We stand at the crossroads like headless chicken, 
trying to get to the next thing without stopping. And stopping is a natural form. It's a natural thing to do. And the seeds do it. Winter does it. You know, nature does it. But we've stopped doing it. So number one is stop. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is to really um, do it, a life audit, as I call it. And I call it the table of life. Um, it looks like a table. It's just work to do that helps you holistic, holistically look at where you are now and where you want to go into the future. It gives you like a toolbox. So the table of life is a really good exercise. Do you want me to explain a little bit about how it works? Maybe uh, at a later stage, because now I'm just really curious, um, you know, there is one step before we can actually stop. We There are so many people out there. I'm sure they can relate to that. And they think, or they might be afraid that stopping is not possible for them, right? <laughs> like they have to go and give their 120% every day to the job, to the family, especially women. Uh, I'm not excluding men, but we know their families, their children, their yeah children we are homeschooling now we are yeah. doing all those things and especially with women i believe that we might have the mentality that if i stop everything is just going to fall apart and nothing is going to work actually anymore so how to allow us actually to come to the state where we go and now i need a break i need to stop yeah, and, and, you know, the first thing you do, I think, when you think of the word stop and take a break, you think of days, weeks, months. It doesn't have to be that long. There is a definite natural pause in life through cycles of everything that happens. Um, all you have to do is think of even your breath. There's a natural pause from the in to the out, even if it's very, very small. And this is where the magic is. And it's about opening up that little bit of a pause and literally saying, I have to stop now. If I don't stop, I give myself space to work out what my next, next steps are. I'm not going to be coming from a place of truth, a place of intuition, which is this magic word that we use. And I think when you give yourself space to breathe into your heart and listen, you can then come forward much quicker in the long run because you're going down the right path. Hmm. So there are definitely benefits of stopping. And so would you, would you like to explain to us a little bit more about a table of life you just mentioned? Yeah, so as well as stopping, the other thing to do is take a life audit. So a life audit for me, if you think of an old fashioned table, it's got four legs and a, a lovely tabletop. And depending on your age, that, that tabletop will have a beautiful patina because it's been around for a long time. Um, the four parts of the table, the legs, are the external parts. So that they are your health, your connections, your wealth and your knowledge. And I can explain those a little bit. And, and then the top is really knowing yourself in great detail, knowing who you are today. And uh, that takes a little bit of time. Um, you can do it in all sorts of ways, but I think it's really important to do the exercise when you come to a change. So if you're thinking of changing your career, this is a really good time to do this mini audit and really look at yourself in a whole once you've done that, whatever you do, your table will be nice and strong, ready for whatever comes across your way then in the next stage of your life. Mm. So what are the what are the things actually we could be looking for in each of the of the legs? Are there any warning signals, so to speak, or are there any um, measures we could use whether this is working for me or not? So, so if, you, if you are honest with yourself, for example, on the health leg, um, most people are suffering some sort of stress, stress and burnout. So have a look at what your stress levels are if you're reaching burnout. Are you eating well? Are you sleeping well? Are you exercising good? Are you living in a non-toxic environment? Uh, what's your relationships like? Are they toxic? All those type of things will affect your health, 
your hydration, your breathing. Um, we can go on. But if you don't take time to look at it and go, do you know what? My stress is pretty high. You're going to be taking that stress with you to the next job, which means you're not going to probably last very long in that job because you've already taken on board too much before you start. So health is really good. Wealth, you, if you know what your, fi your financial flow is and you know what your ins and outs are and you have a little, a little bit of money saved, say for three months, you don't have to panic about going on to the next thing because you've already got yourself that, that little buffer zone. And, and wealth is also not just your financial flow, it's also thinking about what you're doing for your community. And, and that's often an exchange with other people that's not around money. It can be anything from just texting your, your neighbors and saying, are you okay? Do you want me to go to the shops for you? Or uh, for example, in my case, I have four young German girls who come and we do some art together and we speak in English because it gives them chance to practice English. It's an exchange, it's fun time. It gives me downtime, it gives me a break, reduces the stress. You see, see what I'm getting at, you get this picture of how everything's interlaced and when it's not just career. Connections is a big one and you've already had the guru of connections talking and Deborah Claire Proctor is the perfect example of how to do really good connections. And you know, I always say to people, if you've got 30 people and when I say that, normally their faces just go, how many? <laughs> <laughs> and you've got 30 people you can rely on. If something happens and you need help in whatever format then that may be, somebody within that 30 will be available for you because we've all got our own life stuff going on. So, you know, you, you've got to be able to, to curate these connections so that you've got them when you need them and vice versa, they've got you when they need you. So that's really important. And knowledge, the knowledge audit, and again, one of your speakers has spoken about that. That's really, really good to do. What skills do I know? You know, and it's not what I've got a qualification for, it's what skill sets do I know? What don't I know? And probably more important than that, what do I never want to know? Mm. And those are the things that we're not good at, things we don't like doing. And, and those you will get somebody else to, to do those for you. Um, but if you've got them written down in front of it, in, in a, on a piece of paper in front of you, it's really easy to see where you can direct yourself for your next stage. And, you know, when you've got, when you're thinking about making a change. So it looks to me almost like an art to keep everything in balance. And sometimes yes. like, there might be occasions where we just struggle to keep the balance, right? Yeah. There are even yeah. times in our lives when, I don't know, we're going through some extra stress, we're moving houses, we're getting married and creating families, all that beautiful stuff, right? And, and we might be right now in one of those moments uh, for one or the other reason. So would, would you be advising anyone to focus on the priorities or would you go and tell someone to, you know, uh, to extend the fires, <laughs> go there where, it, where it's burning already? How, how would you go about keeping that balance or creating new balance if there is no balance at the moment? Yeah, um, so if you haven't got balance, then balance leads to dis-ease. So you're no longer in balance, so things are not easy. And, and so you will make yourself ill. Now, I'm not saying everything has to be in perfect balance. And, you know, we have this concept that we have to somehow perform to a work-like balance. And I often talk to my clients about the fact that life is, is like a, um, a heartbeat monitor. It has its ups and downs, its peaks and troughs. Um, it's not balanced if it's balanced it's a flat line which means you're dead <laughs> nobody balance. wants to be flatlined yeah. so you know we're gonna have the ups and downs and uh, you know there is no such thing as work-life balance over your lifetime it will balance out but when you're dealing with moving homes new babies new careers paying the mortgage 
things don't feel balanced. And that's why you have to, and I, I'm really serious on this, you really have to listen to your intuition and say, internally, does this make me happy? Is this working for me? Because there's no reason why you have to follow what your neighbors are doing. You have to have the mortgage and the kids and the car and the education and all the other things that Joe Bloggs has got. That because might other, be. Other people don't live their lives like that. Not everybody does. That might be a scary question, actually, for some of us, right? Because what, what, what if I find out that something is actually not working for me, then I have to change, mm -hmm. right? And we as humans, we are quite afraid of changes. We don't like them. We are not prone on them and, and we don't want to move <laughs> the waters. So would you say that authenticity is needed in this case as well? Like being really honest. You, to yourself, you have to listen to that gut reaction when you say those words to yourself. And the other thing is to remember that the only constant in the universe is change. Mm -hmm. whether you like it or not and a lot of it you have no control over just like we're sitting here at home working from home because of covid at the beginning of 2020 we were all living a completely different lifestyle than we are doing now we had no control change is the constant in the universe um, and it's something that we think we can create control and we can't right and so some people might, might be thinking, okay, I know that I don't have balance. I, something is missing. Um, what, for example, I'm working way too much uh, and I'm neglecting my health because of that or my wellness, whatever that might be. And yet, what can I do? Like, where, where, what should be the first steps? I know it's going to be very individual for everyone, but then where shall I get the courage to change things which have been like this for a very long time? So the first thing is to stop. The second thing is to hold up your hand and be honest and say, this is not working. And that comes from listening deep down. So taking a few deep breaths and listening to what your body's saying to you. And if your body's saying, what are you doing? Then listen. And then take it from there. There's no reason to think that you have to eat the elephant all in one go. Mm. It's about now you've got the elephant in the room. You can see it. You know what it is. <laughs> what am I going to do about it? And, and, and be, again, truthful to yourself. This doesn't have to be done overnight. This is something that can be done in small steps, which will get you there into the future. I learned this lesson when I walked the Camino de Santiago um, about three years ago, I walked from the, um, the French border across to uh, Santiago de Compostela. So 729 kilometers over 34 days. And you, you learn to trust in the process. You learn that the only thing you have to do is get up in the morning, put your boots on, in the case of the Camino, find a yellow arrow, which will send you in the right direction and then take a step. Yeah, absolutely. Gradually over time, you will get there. This is not a race. The people who walk the Camino the slowest get the most out of it. The key here is to listen to yourself saying, I can't do this anymore. This is not working. This is not who I am. And if it is who you are, it's fine. But if you've got this deep intuitive feeling inside you that this is not working, you have to listen. Because if you don't listen, you'll still get the same story and the same, uh, you know, thrown at you until you do listen. So it's easier to listen the first time around. This is so interesting, Kay, because I walked the Camino, uh, I guess it was five or six years ago. And I, and I had the very same experience, <laughs> you know, at the beginning. Okay, honestly, I didn't do more than two weeks because I had my holidays for two weeks only. So I walked from, I think it was Lyon, but not the French one, the Spanish one, 
in the last two weeks to, to Santiago de Compostela. And one day I was looking at that very, uh, very big mountain in front of me. And I was like, how am I going to go through that? <laughs> like, it's, it, it's impossible. It looked so steep that uh, we know how to climb that. And then the next morning, as you said, I, you know, put on yeah. my boots, follow the arrow, I follow other pilgrims. And the next day after that, I was over the, that hill and I looked back and I was like, oh my God, I just did that. <laughs> and that's a really good example of how life is, isn't it? When you think about it at the end of the day, life is looking back and going, wow, you know, we climbed that mountain, we did that. You know, I remember um, we were really busy with work, my husband and I, and we decided to buy a rundown farmhouse here in Mallorca, which we restored. We restored as we birthed two children. And, and it was a nightmare. And how we kept our businesses going and how we built the house and looked after babies, I have no idea, but we did. We climbed that mountain. And then you meet the next mountain, you know, the next mountain, you know, for example, in 2015, my husband got a, a phone call and got offered a job in Zanzibar in Tanzania. So we just up sticks and left, left the house, put it for sale. And then um, we took 20 kilos with us. We thought that was really downsizing. We left the boys behind and everything. Then you walk the Camino and you realize seven and a half kilos is actually downsizing. And it's and, still too much. And it's still too much. <laughs> We need very little in our lives. We just think we need a lot. Um, so yeah, and if you can simplify, take off the layers of the onion. And the same with the tabletop, and you know, looking at your beliefs and your values and your skill set, incorporating it with your four legs, you become a much rounded and more stable individual for taking on a new, new career or a new pursuit. So let's just talk a little bit more about those benefits once we are more balanced, more stable, we have all, the, all those pillars taken care of. How does it actually feel to, to someone who is balanced like that? What can you do with this? Everybody's going to be different and individual. It's a unique question. Um, so I can't really answer it for other people in many respects. But what it does do, it gives you space. And when you've got space, you are able to do other stuff with your life. Um, and that can be anything from just um, enjoying the morning, a morning walk, an extra walk, uh, and enjoying the sunset or the sunrise. It, it could be the fact that you've got space to do one of those hobbies that you've always had on your to-do list and never got around to. Uh, and, or it could just be the fact that you've got extra space to breathe on a morning and uh, you, you, you have to rush in the shower or it can be simple. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be difficult at all. Or it could be that you've got space to change the world. And right now that's what we're, I think in many ways we're being asked to do is to change ourselves. Because we, when we turn, change internally, we will ch exchange, we will change externally. Um, Absolutely. So the work we have to do is on ourselves right now. So I've heard a lot, especially from a lot of business coaches and, and, you know, mentors out there that they, they would give advice to people schedule, not only your, your busy time, but schedule also your free time, the hobbies, the, the relaxation and all that stuff. Are you, are you actually a fan of that? Would you recommend that? Or would you be someone who goes with the flow and just takes the space and breaks whenever you need? I used to be a person who had everything down on an agenda and I knew exactly what was going on and what I was doing and went shunting from one thing to another and uh, managed to make it all work. And now, I, I, maybe it's age, I'm not sure, but now I'm much more in flow. I still keep my to-do appointments, but the rest of the day is much more open. I know myself a little bit now with nearly 60 years of experience that I'm a morning person. Then I'm going to get up and I'm going to do my creative stuff, you know, my writing and other stuff that I do on a morning. 
and I know that I prefer to contact and reach out and talk to people on a Thursday. Thursday works for me as a really nice day. Uh, and then I like to leave Friday a little bit more open so that maybe the weekend can be a bit longer if I want it to be. Um, Monday is more of a planning day, uh, which goes a bit, little bit with Sunday evening. Uh, and that suits me. It, it probably won't suit everybody, but it's my way of, of dealing with it. And I think that's the important thing is you have to find what suits you. That is the key uh, mm -hmm. because we're all different. So it, it's about, for me, I love facilitating space so that people can find that because you know, not everybody knows what it is or how to do it. I just love, Kate, that we started with space and now we're finishing off with coming back to space yes. again, <laughs> right? We, we've traveled uh, the whole circle, I would say. So thank you so much for your time, for your generosity on this interview. And um, you have a gift for our audience as well. What is it? What, what will they get? So it's a PDF download, an ebook that just goes into the table of, of life in more detail. So it gives you some ideas and concepts just, just to expand the, the topic, basically. Awesome. So everyone, you can download the workbook or the PDF uh, by clicking at the button underneath this video. And if you have any question, obviously, you can reach out to Kay directly uh, to herself. Kay, it was a pleasure. And thank you so much for coming on to this interview. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Take care. Bye.